that eating saturated fat is bad and you only do it insofar as you want to taste it. Um, and then of course there's a small group of people that uh, love to eat organs and meats and, and really pack cholesterol um, and would argue that doesn't matter if your LDL is 870, um, it's not gonna impact your health. What's the reality around LDL, uh, HDL, dietary cholesterol, saturated fat, uh, at least in your view? Uh, so first, let's differentiate between cholesterol and fat, just for the listener, because um, we use them. So, you know, I don't want to make sure people sure. understand. So, so cholesterol is a is a really complicated molecule. So it's a ringed molecule. It is a lipid. So it is a hydrophobic molecule that is synthesized by every cell in the human body. Uh, it is so important that without it, uh, if you look at sort of genetic uh, conditions that impair cholesterol synthesis depending on their severity, they can be fatal in utero. So in other words, anything that really interferes with our ability to produce cholesterol will uh, is a threat to us as a species. And the reason for that is cholesterol makes up the cell membrane of every cell in our body. So, you know, as you know, but maybe the listeners don't, even though a cell is a spherical thing, it has to be fluid, right? It's not just a rigid like sphere. Uh, like a you know blow up ball, right? It's got to be able to kind of move in this way to mesh with other cells. It also has to accommodate having porous structures that traverse its membrane to allow ions and things like that to go across. And it's cholesterol that gives the fluidity to that membrane. It's also, as you're alluding to, the backbone of some of the most important hormones in our body, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, cortisol. Um, so we have this thing, super important. Okay, then let's talk about does cholesterol, can you get cholesterol in your diet? Yes, you can eat foods that are rich in cholesterol. What was known in 1960, but somehow escaped everybody's imagination until finally the American Heart Association acknowledged this a few years ago, is that the cholesterol you eat does not really make it into your body. And the reason for that is it's esterified. So we have, and not to get too nerdy, but I think people, I think if, I really think it's important people understand how this thing works. So we have cells in our gut and enterocytes that they're the endothelial cells of our gut. They have, each one of them has basically two transporters on them. So the first is called the Neiman Pick C1 like one transporter. The second is called the ATP binding cassette G5 G8. Okay, the Neiman Pick C1 like one transporter will bring in any sterol, cholesterol, zoosterol, phytosterol, any sterol that fits through the door will come in. Virtually all of that is the cholesterol we produce that gets taken back to the liver, that the liver packages in bile and secretes. So that's, that's what aids in our digestion, which is another thing I should have mentioned earlier. In addition to using cholesterol, for cell membranes and hormones, we wouldn't be able to digest our food without cholesterol because it's what makes up the bile salts. So our own cholesterol is basically recirculated in a pool throughout our body, and this is the way it gets back into the body. It's through this Neiman Pixie one like one transporter. When it gets in there, the body, this is the checkpoint of regulation. This is where the body says, do you have enough cholesterol in the body, yes or no? If yes, I will let that cholesterol make its way into the circulation. So it'll go off the basolateral side of the cell, not the luminal side, into the body. Alternatively, the body says, you know what? We have enough cholesterol. I'm going to let you poop this out. And now the ATP binding cassette will shoot it out. It'll go back into the luminal side and away it goes. 